Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will try to understand the mechanism of vision. So by now we understood that uh, uh, eye is made up of various different structures and each and every structure has a specific role to perform. So now we will see that all these structures together, how do they help in seeing things? Now. There are two aspects of it. One aspect is the physical aspect of vision. That is the physical aspect where we talk about how image is formed by the lens and where the image is formed. So there we talk about image distance, object distance and all those stuff. Now here since we are studying biology, we are not going to talk about all those things. For those things, you can refer the physics videos on image formation by eye of class 9th. So here we will talk in terms of biology, that how the electric impulse is generated, how it is carried by the neurons and how it reaches the brain. So we will talk about that part. So let us see the mechanism behind vision. So let us try to understand the mechanism of vision. Now light rays focused on retina because retina has the photoreceptor cells. So when the light rays are focused on the retina, now how light and reaches till retina, light falls on passes through the cornea of the eye. Then it enters inside the eye through the pupil, the small opening at the center of the eye. Then it reaches the retina. Their impulse is generated in rods and cones. Now rods and cones are the photoreceptor cells. So they contain the photo uh, pigments. Now these pigments uh, receive light of specific wavelengths and they generate electrical impulse. Now photo pigments like rhodopsin. So rhodopsin is just an example of a photo pigment which is present in the rods. So this rhodopsin contains a protein called opsin with a cofactor aldehyde called retinal. So this is how the structure of rhodopsin looks like. So here if you see this is the structure of rhodopsin where this black colored structure which you see here at the center, this black colored structure is the retinal aldehyde which acts as a cofactor. And this structure is the protein opsin. Now what happens? This retinal, the aldehyde, gets dissociated. Now once this aldehyde gets dissociated, what would happen? Once this aldehyde is dissociated, the structure of the protein will also change because after all, rhodopsin is formed by opsin plus retinal. So now retinal gets dissociated. So the structure of the opsin will also undergo changes. So there will be change in the structure of the protein opsin. Now this change in the structure will result in changes in the membrane permeability because these proteins are present on the membranes, right? So as you can see here, so the permeability of the membrane will also change. As a result, a potential difference will be generated in the photoreceptor cells. Now whenever there is a potential difference which gets generated, that potential difference itself can actually generate action potential which can then travel throughout the cells. So the action potential will travel through the bipolar cells to the ganglion cells. So the action potential will be generated in these cells. Then it travels to the bipolar cells. From bipolar cells it travels to the ganglion cells. And then this impulse is transmitted to the brain by the optic nerve. So from there it travels through the optic nerve and finally it reaches the brain. Now in brain it reaches that particular section of the brain which is the optic lobe or which is specialized for the perception of vision. So this is how this is the mechanism of vision. This is how we are able to see different objects and interpret them. So now let us quickly look at the image formation process by eye. Now as I said, the image is formed on the retina. So let us suppose if you are looking at this boy. So the image which is formed in the retina is a real and inverted image. So something like this. Now this when transferred to the brain through the optic nerve, it's interpreted by the brain and again it is corrected. So that is then the brain sends a signal to us saying that what we are seeing and how we are seeing it. So the focal length of the eye lens is varied by the ciliary muscles as I already mentioned and this is how image formation takes place. 
Now for a distant object, if the object is at infinity and for an object which is at a finite distance. So this is how the image will be formed. Now I will not get into the details of these ray diagrams because these have already been taught to in, in your physics. So if you want to know more about them, you can refer the physics videos of class 9. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.